I'm not sure. It looks like we're live now. Well, our adventure in Sacramento uh, continues. It rained last night and uh, our bedroom is flooded. Uh, anyway, you know when you buy a lemon car, it's just a lemon. Well, this whole move is one giant lemon. <laughs> okay. And we didn't even buy this house. Okay. We're... Anyway. Anyway. I do have something to do. Yesterday I uh, read my address to the OTO National Convention. And I found, I found a, another one that I did for the 11th biannual National Ordo Templi Orientis Conference that was held in Orlando, Florida back in uh, 2017. And uh, this was my speech, uh, even though it's for the, the gathered members of the U.S. Uh, Grand Lodge of OTO, it's for you too. The title of my talk is Success is Thy Proof, Argue Not, Convert Not, Talk Not Over Much. Now that's a quote from the Book of the Law. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Well, here we are again, you out there having a nice lunch and me up here trying to digest the meaning of my 42 years of life in OTO. If you ask me how things are going, my answer is the same as, as it was in 1975. It's too soon to tell. I do know that last month I turned 69. 69. That has a nice ring to it, doesn't it? I just enjoy saying 69. For me, it has a special significance because my birthday is July 11th. And so my sun sign is Cancer, whose symbol is 69. And the Hebrew letters associated with Cancer is Chet. And Chet, spelled in full, is 418, which is the numeration of our magic word, Abrahadabra, which expresses union of the five and the five of the microcosm and the six of the macrocosm and union with our holy guardian angel, which is the fulfillment of the great work and the mystery of the holy grail, which is also the great magical work of the OTO and the reason we are all here for the chance of union, because that was the theme that year for the chance of union. I love 69 and I love my religion. In November, Constance and I will celebrate, or at least we'll observe, our 50th wedding anniversary. We've been dating since 1965. I think that deserves a song. And the song that I sang was, uh, uh, She Don't Know Where the Money Comes From. Oh, I had my guitar with me. I'm such a ham. And I, I've posted the song, uh, or at least a, a video of me, uh, of my hands playing that song. Uh, and so I'm not going to read you the lyrics right now. As in the past, Notacon organizers many months in advance asked me to provide a title for my talk. And so, to disguise the fact that I didn't have a clue what I wanted to talk about, I quickly came up with the title, Success is thy proof, argue not, convert not, talk not over much. And that's from the Book of the Law, Liber Al Vel Legis, chapter 3, verse 42. I thought it sounded pretty cool. But now I'm not so sure. I, I really don't like to argue. And I absolutely hate it when anyone tries to convert me to do something or believe anything. But as I'm sure we're all aware, I've got a big problem about not talking over much. It looks like I talk myself 
into taking 40 minutes, into talking 40 minutes about not talking too much. So let's start off by quoting the original talk not over mucher. Lao Tzu. Heading the list of our saints in the Gnostic Mass is Lao Tzu, who tells us, Tao, or the way that can be spoken of, is not the constant way." Unquote. Like Lao Tzu's mysterious Tao, Thelema defies objective de definition. Is it a philosophy? Well, yes and no. Although there are philosophic nuances to Thelema, it is, in my opinion, bigger than philosophy. But if we were attempt were to attempt to explain the lima to someone who needs to approach things from a philosophic angle, we could start the conversation by saying something evasively truthful like the lima is a rational philosophy of spiritual self sufficiency. Is it a religion? Well, yes and no. Although there are infinite ways to apply your understanding of Thelema through religious forms and expression, Thelema itself, in my opinion, is bigger than religion. But if we were to attempt to explain Thelema to someone that needs to approach things from a classic religious angle, we could start the conversation by saying something childishly simple, like Thelema is a new, improved religion of sun worship. And then quickly adding, if you define the word sun as also meaning yourself. Is it a magical system? Well, yes and no. Although many magicians consider themselves Thelemites, Thelema itself, in my opinion, is bigger than any particular system, technique, or study. Indeed, once a person has comfortably awakened to the new level of self-awareness that characterizes the formula of the Aeon of the Crowned and Conquering Child, Thelema serves to enhance energize and hybridize whatever philosophy, religion, or magical system or school of thought that you, as a spiritual artist, most perfectly resonate with. Is Thelema Crowley's, is Thelema Crowley's Magical Societies, the Ordo Templi Orientis, or, and AA? Although these two organizations propagate the law of Thelema and the teachings of Aleister Crowley, Thelema is bigger than any organization, order, school of instruction. As a matter of fact, Thelema is bigger than anything that can be named by any of the eight parts of speech. Thelema is bigger than the Book of the Law or Aleister Crowley, or anything in heaven and earth. Thelema is bigger than everything but you. And you are not your philosophy, not your religion, not your magical systems, or your teachers, or your organizations. You are the only evidence, the only proof there can ever be of success. Furthermore, there is only one person in the universe capable of making that judgment, and that person is you. So there's really no point in arguing with anyone, nothing to convert anyone to, no reason to talk over much. But I've got about a half hour left, so let's uh, talk for a moment about the word success. Success means many things to many people. And as Thelemites, we should be among the first to recognize that each individual's perception of reality is uniquely their own. 
While we're all entitled to voice our considered opinion, it's ultimately not the business of any one star to weigh or pass judgment upon another's star self-focused perceptions. Even should the other's perceptions appear to be obviously misguided, delusional, or in error. In recent years, we've all seen the so-called evangelical community's embrace of the gospel of prosperity, which pretty much says that being rich is God's sign that you are blessed, and being poor is God's sign that you are cursed. Now, while there may be a degree of cosmic profundity in these statements, I personally don't believe that's the kind of success the God of the third chapter of Liber Al is talking about here. In the last 10 years or so, I've been interviewed quite a bit. In almost every non-magical type of interview, I'm asked something like, if magic works, why aren't you rich and famous? Why don't you own a big house or drive a Porsche? Why can't you use your magic to win the lottery? These are fair questions. Especially if one's proof of success is measured by outward signs of wealth and your will-focused endeavors revolve around amassing material objects that are presently coveted by a culture for whom houses, cars, and a big bank balance are indicators of a successful life. Everyone is different. But for me, a successful life has always simply meant happiness and the opportunity and ability to pursue the great work. This is what success means to me. For you, it is probably something altogether different. And for Thelemites, that's how it should be. But being happy and having the opportunity and ability to pursue the great work is not my ambition. It's not a god. In fact, I've pretty much never had any ambition. I've never set any goals for my life. In fact, I'm pretty much of a bum. When I was growing up in Nebraska, my teachers were constantly preaching, you'll never succeed in life if you don't set goals for yourself. You've got to have a plan. You've got to set goals. Then you've got to work day and night to achieve those, those goals. Then you have to set more goals and work, work, work until you succeed. I always thought that was crazy. Here's this 45-year-old, twice-divorced, pedophile basketball coach and uninformed social studies teacher who sells encyclopedias door-to-door -door in the summertime and drives a dented Edsel telling me about setting goals in life. Even as a kid, I knew that was such bullshit. But honestly, now that I'm a mature and, and wizened adult, I can appreciate the creative magical power of focused intent. For indeed, is it not written in Liber Libriae? Fixed thought is a means to an end. Thought is a commencement of action, and if a chance thought can produce much effect, what cannot a fixed thought do? But it is also written in Liber Al, for pure will, unassuaged of purpose, delivered from the lust of result, is every way perfect. I admit, I've always been lazy. And perhaps my laziness is my most redeeming quality, my most valuable asset. At some point, early in this incarnation, I melded the boundless wonders of my imagination with the slings and arrows and the thousand natural shocks of objective reality. I began to simply 
trust myself from microsecond to microsecond and then respond to every unfolding event by doing what is clearly the one and only thing I can do at the moment. Imagine how my heart rejoiced when I read, quote, for pure will unassuaged of purpose delivered from the lust of result is every way perfect, unquote. And then I, uh, give a small quote from uh, Libra 65. Also the Holy One came upon me and I beheld a white swan floating in the blue. Between its wings I sate and the aeons fled away. And the swan flew and dived and soared, yet no whither we went. A little crazy boy that rode with me, spake unto the swan, and said, Who art thou that dost float and fly and dive and soar in the inane? Behold, these many aeons have passed. Whence comest thou? Whither wilt thou go? And laughing, I chide him, saying, No whence, no whither. The swan being silent, he answered, then if with no goal, why this eternal journey? And I laid my head against the head of the swan and laughed, saying, Is there not joy ineffable in this aimless winging? Is there not weariness and impatience for who would attain to some goal? The swan was ever silent. Ah, but we floated in the infinite abyss. Joy, joy. White swan, bear thou ever me up between thy wings. Success is thy proof. If success means I must have a car, then I'll have to get a car and be satisfied with a 1984 Volkswagen van. If success meaning means not freezing to death in the winter and living in a safe, quiet neighborhood and community, then I'll just have to live in Southern California oh, and be satisfied with a cheap little duplex apartment with a library loft. And actually... I'll have to be satisfied with a leak that I'm going to have to fix in a house in Sacramento. If success means establishing a level of public exposure for my creative efforts, then I'll just have to write and publish books, songs, and accept invitations to lecture from wherever in the world and be satisfied with earning jack shit in royalties and fees. Be that as it may, these modest demands and my complex, utter lack of ambition have somehow allowed me for 50 years to do pretty much what I perceive moment by moment to be my will. My un-American lack of ambition and goals has permitted me to pursue my will-focused passions and work my magic, study, write, sing, play, teach, learn, and keep plugging away at perfecting myself. Perhaps it has even allowed me to wake up a little, a little more, allowed me to work on exhausting my potentiality. These simple needs have been just barely enough to keep a roof over our heads and nutritious food in our bellies, just barely enough to allow us to be a family and live a happy and fulfilling life. Just barely enough to allow me to share on a world stage my thoughts, my observations, my dreams, myself in books and recordings that perhaps might echo for a few years after I'm gone. Success is thy proof.
and for Lon Milo Duquette. Lon Milo Duquette is the only evidence, the only proof that there can ever be of success. Why don't I use magic to get rich? What a stupid question. Magic has made me the richest person in the cosmos. Why don't I use magic to win the lottery? What a stupid question. Magic has made me the luckiest person in this dimension. And if you think I need a huge mortgage and a Porsche to be successful, fuck you. Love is the law. Love under will. Thank you very much. And I ended up that talk with sort of a group singing of my song, Sweet Babylon. Well, that's it for today. I'm going to turn off this light. Open that door to the living room, or is it the hallway, and step into having to deal with that uh, situation we have with the rain. Until tomorrow, hopefully, continue to be good to yourself and be good to each other. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law, love under will.